Um, I'm Brent Bloom. I work for Accenture. We're the world's largest technology consultancy. And um, my role is to oversee the technical delivery of all of the AR, VR work we do for our clients um, around the globe. So let's get started. Um, Now the time to invest in AR and VR is just you know you start saying I've heard this before and I've got IoT projects and I've got um, artificial intelligence projects and some of them are saying I'm trying to make a mobile app, but the data we're seeing is that AR and VR has the potential to be the next big thank you <laughs> the next big thing it is the next uh, big business for enterprise. It's the instruction manual of the future. It is the training video of the future and the sales future video of the future. Um, in fact, the data coming out of Juniper says that the enterprise app market for AR and VR will reach 2.4 billion uh, by 2019. Some of our clients have started early. They've started building business cases and pilots. And one of the questions I get most often is like, what's real? What, okay, Accenture, what are you guys really doing? What's more than a demo or a proof of concept? And for sure, the state of the industry is mostly in the realm of pilots right now. But those are our smartest clients, in my opinion. Um, they are figuring out, oh gosh, are these things safe? Are they comfortable? Um, which use cases do they work for? Which do they not work for? Do our employees you know, refuse to wear them? Do they end up mysteriously breaking? Um, and by learning now, while I would say the, the costs are lower and the opportunities are higher, those clients will have an idea of exactly where to get started as hardware matures, as public opinion matures, um, and they'll be able to surpass their competitors. Right? Like, if you want to invest at some point on the Gartner curve, don't do it at the peak of inflated expectations. Do it as we're coming out of the trough of disillusionment. Um, so if, if those kind of more logical based appeals to you guys haven't landed. Um, the more emotional sense is just like, this is inevitable, right? Mary Meeker, um, other uh, technology kind of uh, prognosticators are, are saying, we are going from an era where uh, computing was large and impersonal, uh, mainframes, home computers, uh, then, then computers we all carry in our pockets, right? Computing is getting smaller, closer to us, more personal. Um, uh, Robert Scoble's great book, The Fourth Transformation, details this at, at length. Um, check that out if you haven't read it. But the idea is that this is the way the world is, is headed, and businesses will be affected by it as much as consumers. Um, all right, so in the context of the discussion we'll have today, um, our work spans lower, less immersive experiences, things like assisted reality glasses. That's how we classify Google Glass, um, the View 6 devices, and so forth. Um, all the way across to more immersive experiences uh, like Oculus and HTC Vive. Starting with assisted reality, this is actually where we see, I would almost say most of the traction we're having. Um, I think it's been around a little bit longer and it, the form factor is quite wearable. There are very well defined use cases. Um, this slide details some of them, but I would say it mostly breaks down into guided workflow, right? Showing someone how to do a series of work steps, um, one, two, three, four. If someone gets stuck, they can reference a picture, reference a video, um, or call an expert. And that's probably the other uh, large use case that we see is over-the-shoulder coaching or remote collaboration. But, you know, that's sort of the state of things today. Imagine a system in the future um, full of integration to IoT systems, to legacy systems like SAP data, and uh, warehouse management data, and then further enriched by the idea that we could connect you to the perfect expert at any time. Um, imagine knowing that, well, I got stuck on step seven, and I'm a level two engineer, I'm in California, I speak English. Um, let's connect me to the ideal expert who was working on this last, who recorded a video, who speaks my language and is awake during the time that I am, right? Like these kinds of expert systems will be the future of um, industrial work when it comes to smart glasses. 
I won't drain this slide, but these are some of the benefits that we're seeing around assisted reality. There are ways that our clients are measuring their projects, um, either to get them funded or to, to say, you know, hey, we actually had some success at the end of this. That's another question I get a lot. You know, what are the numbers? What's the ROI? What's the payback period? It's still early. Um, we have that for some projects. We don't have it for others. I think it's, it's hard to invest in an AR VR project without some degree of just saying, I inherently believe this will be beneficial to collaboration, to accuracy, to safety, and so forth. Um, I'm going to show two videos from work that we've done that are now public. Um, our work at Airbus uh, helped a, right, when you order an airplane, it comes blank, so, so to speak. Someone's got to install the seats. And if you've ever built a piece of IKEA furniture, you know how frustrating it can be to get to the last step and realize that you're like just one peg off. The shelf is one peg off. Well, the same thing happens in an aircraft. These installers install the seats, and my god, it's a disaster if the seats are one peg off and you have to take them all out and start over. So um, through the work that we did with them, we completely eliminated all errors, and we took the time to build an aircraft and reduced it uh, by 83%. And then at KPN, um, we took 100 field force engineers, um, equipped them with Google Glass, and gave them work orders to repair telecom equipment in the Netherlands. And week over week, they liked the system. Uh, they never disliked it, but they liked it more every week. Um, they were more engaged, and we saw improvements in quality and um, time to task completion. So we'll take a look at those videos. They both won um, awards at Mobile World Congress. Airbus this past year, KPN the year before, they were both the Enterprise Application of the Year. That laser pointer that he's working with is actually Bluetooth enabled, so the system knows and can actually confirm that he's doing the work properly. It's not just a suggestion to him, um, it's a verification. Um, this is all in Dutch <laughs> with English subtitles, um, so I will narrate. We had an IoT integration um, that helped the technicians find the proper server closet. This is a large industrial complex, you know, just getting to the right room was, was a bit of an accomplishment in some cases. As they're walking in, uh, he'll get the work order instructions, make sure he's headed to the right shelf, rack, uh, and so forth. He's going to call out the asset tag, and using the voice recognition, the system will confirm he's working on the right piece of equipment. And then he starts to watch, yeah, we got the right equipment, he starts to watch a video um, to, uh, to walk him through the first step or two in the task, and he's mirroring those instructions. KPN in particular had a problem of an aging workforce, and so to come up with a technology that appealed to the younger workforce um, and trained them how to do this job was particularly important. And while we didn't actually do this as part of the pilot, you can imagine that we could have even had the um, older generation use smart glasses to record their work as a manner of making training videos and easily annot annotating them. He took a picture to confirm, or rather to like show that the work was finished, and that gets stored in the knowledge repository. And on his way out the door, he's going to notice something wrong and open a ticket um, for another work order. 
All right, we can go on to the next slide. Cool. So mixed reality is the next major category that we work in. Um, these are four different use cases that we've built against recently. One is involving a physician and a first responder. So you can imagine that if someone's injured, a first responder is on the scene, and there might be a remote physician. Well, that physician can now see full body scans um, on a tablet. Uh, an EMT wearing HoloLens could then get direct feedback as a physician is circling parts of the body um, or asking for additional data and scans. For a European um, electronics manufacturer, we built a proof of concept around group collaboration where multiple individuals can work on a circuit breaker at once, showing the future of how products will be designed and troubleshooted. Um, you'll see the sales and marketing use case in just a moment, and then we think there's great potential for workflow when it comes to mixed reality. Um, you know, people ignore paper instructions all the time, but if you've got circles and arrows pointing at how to do your job, it's hard to ignore those. We worked with an aircraft manufacturer, um, uh, and th they make fighter jets, right? These are serious operations. And w with their engineers, we were able to show them the steps to route a wire harness through the fuselage of an aircraft, um, and two of those airplanes are flying today. These are some of the benefits behind mixed reality. You'll see a lot of similarities to that of um, assisted, but of course in a, in a much richer, um, richer context, I would say. And now we'll see the video from Bombardier. Um, this was something we did at the Farnborough Air Show. They wanted a way to sell their aircrafts to show them off. And typically, someone walks you around the airplane, points out the features of the brakes, the, you know, the engine, and so forth. But with Microsoft Hollands, you can actually see it and hear it and feel it. It's a much more um, real sales experience. Oh. Help me out. There is audio. <laughs> so mixed reality for a sales and marketing use case. In particular, we did a walk around of an aircraft where participants can stop at any of the eight stations and learn more about so that the purple path the plane, on the ground the wing, is actually what's uh, guiding the them from produced. one what area to in the, the mixed next. reality device like Hololens. Are These signs are interactable. That they can interact There's with. videos. That's the exciting part. You know, there's been augmented reality glasses in the past, smart glasses and so forth, but users can actually click on elements. They can play videos, hear sounds, and, and drive the experience the way that they see fit. And that's what's really exciting about HoloLens. Beyond sales and marketing, there's a number of great... All right. So one of the other things I loved about that is that we could actually play the engine noise of the... Bombardier aircraft and compare it to the competition and you could hear it as you're walking around looking at the components. The last category is around virtual reality. Um, these are some of the biggest use cases we see. I, I think a lot of people talk about training. Training's awesome. Um, but I'm particularly excited also about having kind of like the virtual boardroom. Um, I think virtual commerce is something that n maybe not enough people are talking about and, and at least my opinion is that in the next three years, we'll see the first major retailer open a VR uh, section of their, their e-commerce store. Benefits of virtual reality. Um, again, I think it, a lot of it comes down to doing the right tasks and doing them sooner, doing them better. Um, I love the use cases around capital planning. You know, anything that needs to be built can first be built in a virtual scenario and tested um, rather than constructed in real life. These are some projects we've worked on recently. Um, this was a uh, cell tower um, climb that we filmed for a cell tower company. And we did it for the purposes of training, but the really awesome thing that came out afterwards is that it had just as much power as a recruiting tool. They were hiring individuals who would start to climb the tower and realize that they don't like this job and it's scary. And <laughs> it turns out that showing them this experience in 360 was a great way to weed out people who would eventually end up quitting. Um, at Mobile World Congress, we debuted our concepts around virtual commerce. The idea that someone could start a shopping experience on their smartphone, um, selecting patterns and materials, collaborating with 
a spouse or a designer, and then put on the virtual reality glasses, right? Flip into Google Daydream, and um, and actually see the house that they've designed and make a change, right? You can see in the example, different colors have different costs associated with it. You've got the, the um, running tally of your purchases. And then when you're finished, you can check out. Um, I think it's an incredible way to look at the future of home design in a variety of other fields. Because now you've got you know, the designer, yourself, uh, the rest of your family, all seeing and experiencing the same thing. We're not talking about the concept of a redesigned home. We're walking through a redesigned home. Um, I think with that you can do a great bit around analytics. No one's measuring what's happening in these virtual worlds. It's an area that we're um, experimenting with quite a bit. I think measuring is hugely important. And my last video, I'm just about on schedule, um, is around some of the VR work we're doing in industry to train uh, for hazardous scenarios. This is a, um, a meltdown in a nuclear plant, or at least a simulation of one. I always say that VR is great for things that are rare, people, experiences, machines that are limited and hard to access. Hopefully, you don't experience a <laughs> nuclear meltdown too often, but with this video, you can train for it. We wanted to create an experience that you couldn't get in any other way. There's no way you can put someone in a high pressure, very dangerous experience in the middle of a potential nuclear meltdown and see how they react under those circumstances. And we don't just take them there in theory, you put them there in practice. Everything inside virtual reality feels real. You're doing great. No, no pressure. Oh. ultimate training tool because it puts you in the material that you're training for. It allows you to make a connection between your brain, your visual system, and your motor system that you can't get from reading a manual or watching a training video. And it does this in a way that will increase efficiency, lower training times and learning times, and create a better result on the back end when you actually go to complete those tasks in real life. What we're doing here moves beyond entertainment, and that's why with Meltdown, we wanted to get into kind of that edutainment realm. We're educating people on the medium. We're still entertaining them, but we're educating them so they can see the consequence for their business. And what's so special about this medium is we can truly do the impossible. Attention. I love it when she says that. Yeah, I mean, you can tell it's, that experience is real to her. Um, gosh, we're out of time. The slides will be posted online. This is a quick template on pitching proposals within your company. Um, this is one on starting a project, outlining who you need to talk to, what needs to be done. Um, come see me. I love talking about this stuff. <laughs> um, real results. Anyway, I'm Brent Bloom. Thank you. Um, I'll be around if you guys want to chat some more. <laughs>